Okay, good. Let's go to Nick. This is, I think it's his countryman, Trav Kuskin, a.k.a. Tim, I believe. All right. So, here he's playing a weaker opponent. And we get this variation where I guess white should play bishop d3 and well, maybe roughly equal. This is an instructive position where black is doing great with the unopposed bishop and the better center. And I thought, yeah, Trevkuskin, a.k.a. Tim, played this great. Give me that thing. Give me that. Come on. Let me take it all away from you. Right? Look at that exchange sack. Just give me everything. My next series of games, actually, is I'm, gonna call, I'm calling them the proud games. We've got a couple people who just submitted games where they slayed people. And so we're going to look at the slay games now. And the next one's Dave. Dave submitted a slay game. Let's check it out. No one understands Bishop D6. All right. White's looking pretty good. F6, I don't know. I don't know. Bam, give me that. Look at this. Give me that. Oh, let's go back and check. Oh, give me that. Oh, we're coming in. It's like uh, MVL versus uh, Napo today. Checkmate. Delivered. Great game, Dave. Anyone who plays Bishop D6 deserves to get slayed. That's right. Paul, let's look at your game. Here we go. Now, Paul, I have to say there was some moves in here that were just so deep I had to call them metaphysical. So let's get into it. I think you should, you've been, now let me just back up and say, Paul has been terrorized by the French. Terrorized. It's like he's been guillotined by this, by, <laughs> by these people, like 1790 in Paris or something over here for Paul. And he's, uh, simply got himself worked up into a terror about the winnower in particular. Winnower had a bad day today, though I don't think it was necessarily the opening's fault, with uh, MVL beating Nepo. Really nice finish. And um, let's take a look. In that game, uh, H4 was played, and that's also, as Paul notes, what Alexienko played as well. Queen g4 can't be wrong. That's the old time move. Thank you very much. Okay, now things get a little weird and interesting. Now, the old time move here is knight e2. And it goes something like this. Knight e2, knight c6, like f4, bishop d7, queen d3. This position has been seen many, many times. And after, let's say, pawn takes, there's a variety of moves that white can play. White has played literally everything here, I think. Rook b1, a4, h4, g3, the whole business. Rook g1, everything has been played in this position. Um, and knight takes c3. Um, and the problem with knight takes c3 is you're going to end up opening lines up for black. Maybe I should backstep this just a second even further and say this is one of the most topical positions for for decades now, but, uh, you know, now as well. And I don't believe Black should actually survive, but he can do a lot of tricky things with his knights and the fact that our king is uncastled. Another tricky thing to understand Paul, if you get this position again, is that our bishops are kind of developed where they are. And maybe our king is just going to hang out for a while. Maybe our rook is going to go over here. We've got a lot of different plans. You took it to a whole new level of complexity, though, with when you did queen d3 first. Okay, I think somebody has probably tried this, but it, it was getting really weird for me. So the guy took and this, this is really important and interesting thing here 
I think it was. I think it was in this position. Oh, I'm gonna hurt myself. I'm, I'm not gonna hurt myself if I'm wrong. I'm an old guy. I think this is where Tall played King D1. This is game one of the 1960 match, and it's just like a what move, but for the purpose of this game to understand it, the point is is that Tall keeps his bishop on this diagonal, which you aren't gonna get if you play F4. Okay. So queen d3, I obviously have questions about queen e5, but let's say he does what he did. Well, then, I think, you're ready to play knight f3 or bishop f4, and you do not have to play f4, right? So I think you tricked him with queen d3. The next move, though, is so bizarre that I was like, what? Maybe, maybe this is like Paul's theory or something like that. Um, because now you took, and I was just like, this is so complex to me because that pawn is hanging on e5. It's falling with a, either a check or a tempo. It's too hard for me to evaluate. Now, of course, you could play f4, maybe bishop f4 as well. And this would transpose back to the main line, right? 7, h4 is more practical. No, what you did was fine, Paul. What you did was absolutely fine. Now, all I need you to do, actually, is to go to this position, play knight e2, and then f4, and the guy's going to play bishop d7. You will get this. Study some interesting games in this position and just choose a line. There's so many interesting things you can do here. h4 is one of them. Rook g1, I don't want you to play rook g1, but I'm just saying, there's a lot of different interesting moves that you can play here as white. And the beauty of it is this. It's going to get very complicated, but it's important for you to say, to like repeat to yourself as a mantra. My king is safe in the center. I'm going to be okay. My rooks will come into play and my bishops are developed where they stand. It sounds like a nursery rhyme, actually. <laughs> Maybe because I have kids now, I'm saying it like a nursery rhyme. But <clears throat> that's the general thrust of the matter. And you have not only the two bishops, but you've got the beast. So you have a very interesting and playable position here that I don't think you should uh, be upset about. <coughs> right, the King D1 move, years and decades later, you know, it was thought to be ridiculous at the time, uh, Nakamura played it, you know, eight, you know, some other time as well. All right. Um, but this is, let's call it the most theoretical thing. But more importantly for our purposes here, I don't understand. What are you doing to yourself? H4? But why are you giving the pawn on E5 for free? Right? That didn't make any sense to me. Uh, okay. So maybe he should have shouldn't have taken on on b five, but okay. And here, I was like, I, I'm. By the way, I think Black's last couple of moves are a little bit controversial. Um, I was unsure about this position entirely as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what was going on here, but definitely not bishop a4 because then you're so passive on a4. Right? Your dream here is to run the pawn. So, you know, you need to think of something like king f1. And you got to tell yourself, "Whoa, those bishops are looking really strong. If he ever trades queens, I got to say thank you very much because then my pawn is rolling." Everything to play for here. So bishop a4, now you're going to give him his dreams because he's going to get like the knight c4 tempo. And he's got rook takes g2 problems as well. And now he is going to raid you here. I'm just going to guess it's all over. Oh, man. Yeah. So, um, Paul, first of all, buddy, 
you're doing okay. Don't 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 be afraid of the winner. Don't be afraid of the winner. If you want to play that H4 line, that's fine. But more, I guess the weirder question I have, and maybe if you want to respond in the chat box, that might be interesting for everybody. But what's going on? Let's say in this position. Why would you why would you take on C3 like that? It just seems like it, I just, it's hard for me to imagine. And like I said, maybe you you had thought about it, but like, and then also here, like to also let him take again. I think F4 transposes back to the other variation. I recommend everybody to look at game one of the uh, Botvinnik Tall match. Really nice game from Tall. Uh, sets the stage for the match. Okay, interesting point. And I think that's where it, this, this position, by the way, because Paul is saying he had to take it before it cramped his style. This position is very deep, right? And it has, it follows kind of its own rules. Um, and this pawn, in an interesting way, you don't want to take because it's possible, but you don't actually want to do it because um, it's going to end up opening lines for black. That's right. And here, honestly, one of the things about knight c3 is, if I remember right, black is supposed to play a6. And I think in the game, <clears throat> maybe a6 now, uh, it's hard to imagine that your knight, yeah, your knight's going to have to go somewhere else. And in the game, he lets you play knight b5 to get rid of the thing. Okay. <clears throat> we're, um, we're, we're coming toward the end. Of course, we're going to finish with Ricker, because we always do. In our penultimate game, we have a guy named me. So, his name is me. <laughs> We're going to stick with that. I do encourage you, though, to tell me your real name. A5 is very strange. And uh, all these positions, you know, they're not lost for black, which is surprising. F4. Now... <coughs> Black is in trouble, and let's just say that the main cause of her troubles here are that this knight is not capable of getting into the game easily. It would be great if we could take this thing and play knight c5, but at the moment that would probably come at a cost of a pawn. Now maybe uh, black should suffer that cost anyway. Maybe also just something like probably bishop g4, and she's still alive, maybe. She's still alive after bishop g4. In any case, it goes bad here because now the knight can't get in. And, you know, there's an interesting thing. My friend uh, Jim Josh Riddell said, you know, we all make mistakes and it feels like we blunder all the time. But when you look at our mistakes, it's often the case that they have reasons. And so this mistake, knight c7, the reason is, is the knight is terrible and he's so, she is so um, wanting to get the knight in that she misses, boom, c5, and now the position is lost. And white does a good job mopping it up here. Thank you for all the pieces. It's a little hectic, but white's doing fine. Maybe I went a little fast. But you get the picture, right? Bishops are strong, but not strong enough. They just kept going around and around. Okay, let's stop it there. So, beautiful game from me.